there have been uh, reports of, of the Taliban um, beating Americans uh, and Afghanis who have been trying to to get to the airport. Let's uh, let's turn now to Holly McKay. She is in Uzbekistan. Uh, she just left Afghanistan. She managed to get out where she had been reporting under very dangerous circumstances. Holly, thank you for making time for us. First, talk to us about how you got out, because this is clearly a chaotic and evolving situation there. Absolutely. So I was in the north in Mazar Sharif. So I was far from Kabul. And I happened to be in the Tsar as it fell, and it was just very sudden. And so I sort of holed up in my guest house, and I was trying to get back to Kabul, and the flights were canceled. The Taliban had taken over the airport. So it was a lot of talking to different people and talking to our military and trying to configure a way to get back to Kabul. And then as the situation there deteriorated, I was warned, you know, stay where you are for now. There, don't come here, um, which wasn't a really pleasant feeling because I was not uh, not sure how to get out. So, mm -hmm. in the end, uh, it turned out really the best option that uh, that my photographer and I were also pushing for was that we really needed to talk to the Taliban in order to obtain their permissions to go through the checkpoints uh, to get out. It wouldn't have been safe if we had attempted to do that just on our own, as you can see. Uh, the uh, foreign face isn't particularly well received, so it did right. take some careful coordination, and I have to thank the Uzbek consul very much in Mazar Sharif, and then some work from our, our diplomats as well, and um, and that were able to get us the permission, and the Taliban were the ones who escorted us out. So it was sure. certainly a, a very strange and unique way to exit a country. And certainly dangerous. Holly, mm -hmm. you, you just heard the Pentagon briefing that we aired here on Newsmax TV. Does it match what you are seeing and hearing on the ground from folks who are still uh, in, in Kabul, in Afghanistan, now under Taliban rule? Absolutely. Well, you can definitely see that, uh, that they're a little bit, um, shall I say, frustrated by the process themselves. You can only imagine how the Afghans and the Americans are feeling right now. Everything that every half an hour, I'm getting a message from people that are just completely frustrated and overwhelmed. Uh, the level of violence I've heard about babies getting caught in the crossfire and being hurt. A friend of mine whose wife is passed out three times, even though they have all their pass their passports and their uh, documents to get onto an American plane, just simply can't get there. Uh, it just seems to be chaos and disorder. People have been trying for days to get there and unable, and the clock is really ticking, and people are terrified. And and uh, with each passing hour you're going to have more Taliban uh, come into the city and more Taliban to cement control and at this point um, I would like to see you know really a little bit more of a show of force uh, from the United States in order to protect Americans and protect Afghans that have really done a lot of work to support us and at this point uh, so many of them are just terrified and worried that window is going to close and they are not going to be able to get out in time. And the Pentagon has uh, mm -hmm. confirmed that we are not, in fact, uh, conducting any operations outside the wire at uh, the Hamid Karzai airport in Kabul. Uh, Holly McKay, thank you so much for being with us. Please do uh, stay safe. Thank you. Now let's turn to Rick Rennell for his reaction. He is the former acting director of national intelligence and former United States ambassador to Germany. During the Trump administration, Ambassador Grinnell was instrumental in crafting a historic peace deal between Serbia and Kosovo. Ambassador, always good to see you. Wish it were under better circumstances. Um, I, I want to get your reaction uh, overall to what you just heard at the Pentagon. Um, but first, I want to set this up for you. Uh, let's let's listen to President Biden's assessment of his. Uh, um, we actually, okay. So let let's start off here by um, uh, by getting your reaction to what you just heard at the Pentagon. Look, um, I, I want to start off by saying uh, that this was not an intelligence failure. I want to protect those individuals in the intelligence community who made clear warnings. Uh, the picture now that we're seeing is that in May and June, there were intel intelligence officials as well as State Department career officials saying that the situation was dire, that it was getting worse, that the Taliban was on the march. Those warnings through May and June were ignored. On July 1st, uh, it, so much was ignored that we closed Bagram Air Base. Um, that 
obviously was a disaster. The 5,000 NATO troops at that point said, if you're closing the Bagram Air Base and Americans are leaving, we had 2,500 Americans at that point and 5,000 NATO troops. NATO troops just said, we're out of here as well. So mm -hmm. we saw chaos throughout uh, July. On July 13th, State Department officials at Embassy Kabul said, uh, this is untenable. We, we put forward a, a uh, what we call a dissent cable at the State Department. I've spent 10 years at the State Department, and I know right. many of these people. And 22 of the 23 individuals who work at Embassy Kabul in the economic and political section signed the dissent cable and said that the chaos is ensuing. Nothing was done after that. Um, yeah. And so... I want to be clear this was not an intelligence failure. This was a failure of the political class in Washington, D.C. Ambassador, we've heard the assessments from the president, sort of unicorns and rainbows, last month. We know now there was a tremendous amount of dissent, both at state, uh, within the intel community, and at the Pentagon on this. But yet... For over a month, the White House said, this is, this is great. We're, we're, this is exactly what we should be doing. We are fully prepared. We've made every contingency. Do you believe that the president has been lying to the American people about this all along? Look, we just saw at the Pentagon press conference today John Kirby saying that some Americans were attacked, but it wasn't widespread. Now, now take that. that. That happened today. That just happened. Take that with what Joe Biden just said in his uh, speech where he tried to update us on Afghanistan. And, and he said, if one American is attacked, and then he went further and he said, actually, if they're harassed or blocked trying to get to the airport, there would be severe consequences. Mm -hmm. He said that if you blocked Americans, you harassed right. them from getting to the checkpoint, there would be severe consequences let alone attacks on Americans. And now we've got the Pentagon spokesman literally dismissing attacks on Americans because it wasn't widespread. That, yeah. was, that was his analysis. This is outrageous. This is, uh, imagine what the Taliban is hearing. Imagine what Taiwan is hearing. Imagine what Israel is hearing. Sure. Imagine what Iran is hearing. We, we've got a big concern. And mm -hmm. I, I gotta say to people who are watching us, you gotta get involved. This is a moment, you know, every great civilization has lasted roughly 250 years. I'm not a negative person, but if you yeah. don't get involved in your country right now, you're going to lose your country. Ronald Reagan told us every generation has to fight for freedom. Yeah. This is your time to stand up and be counted. I'm tired of the, I'm afraid of the cancel culture. You got a country to save, speak out. A Ambassador, you mentioned NATO earlier. The Wall Street Journal published another withering opinion piece about how Biden has, how, how Biden has handled this, has done long-term damage to NATO and the confidence of our allies in U.S. leadership. Uh, Europe may be facing now renewed threats from Islamic terrorism and a, and a refugee crisis. What are you hearing? You were stationed there. What were you, he what are you hearing out of your contacts in Europe? Look, I don't say this lightly. Um, I have spoken to a head of state from a NATO country, and the reality is, is they're very frustrated that NATO is not being mobilized. NATO needs U.S. leadership. And what could happen right now is uh, U.S. leaders at NATO could gather everybody together and say, we are going to start taking everybody out that's at risk in Afghanistan. We may land in your country. Uh, it needs to happen immediately. We will then go through and assess through a serious process who could come to the United States and who can go to other countries, but right. we need to get them out and, and have safe haven. That's not happening. There is no U.S. leadership. And look, I don't buy what John Kirby said, that you know they're sharing their uh, information uh, with President Biden. Secretary Austin has a responsibility. He's been hearing from people on the ground. He's been hearing from NATO allies. He's got to speak up much more forcefully because right now he looks incredibly political and he looks silent and he looks like he's just rubber stamping what Joe Biden said.
Ambassador, there are a dozen terrorist organizations plus that still operate in that region. China and Russia are looking certainly to capitalize on this chaos as well. I'd like you to put your, your, your DNI hat on for a moment here and take our audience through the potential ripple effect of all of this. Well, it's a good question, uh, and I'm sure you'll understand that I, I can't do much of that. Um, we, we clearly have great partners in the region. Uh, a lot of people are concerned about the rise of China. China will absolutely take advantage of this situation. They already are. I'm hearing reports that the Chinese are, are immediately rushing in to help get Americans to the airport, and then they're telling those stories so that they look like the heroes. This is what the Chinese do. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to be on guard that we are in a, a fight. Um, I have to say that these rumors that um, the Biden administration uh, is talking about who is going to be our U.S. ambassador to China, um, I'm very concerned about the names that are floating because mm. we've got uh, people who need to stand up against China and the videos coming out um, are, are really showing these individuals who are being considered as apologists for China. Mm. And right now, that's not what we need. Uh, one of the other revelations, Ambassador, this week was that uh, President Biden apparently approached Russia about the prospect of the U.S. leaving Afghanistan, but then keeping troops and resources, military assets in other Central Asian countries. Putin obviously said no. Uh, I'd like to get your reaction to learning that he actually did that. And, and do you believe that that was a naive strategy? Well, I'm concerned that we're asking for permission. Um, you know, the, this is an administration that really believes in consensus first. And, and consensus sounds good, right? It sounds like, oh, can't we all just get along and let's find common ground? And I, I think that that's really good for school board uh, debates. <laughs> but it's not good for foreign policy. Um, and, and I believe that strongly. You can be very nice and strong in diplomacy, and you can have allies, and, and you can make the arguments of why your position is good for our allies. But to somehow just you know allow other countries to veto what we believe our foreign policy, uh, what, what's best for our foreign policy, is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And this is an administration that constantly pushes consensus. And what that means to me is Europeans, Eastern Europeans, Russia possibly, gets to decide whether or not our policy goes forward. They're approving our policy. They're able to veto our policy. Look no further than Nord Stream 2. Right. Uh, and you know, Joe Biden always is saying, well, this is what the Germans wanted. And pipeline was going to be built. Well, it's not what the Europeans wanted. Yeah. So I think that America first means we put forward what's best for us. We articulate that. We have ambassadors that push that message. And we remind our allies that when America is strong, the rest of the world is strong. So what's, what is good U.S. foreign yeah. policy is actually good global policy. All right, Ambassador Rick Rennell. Unfortunately, I have to leave it there, but we really appreciate your insights. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.